everybody please be sure to like and subscribe please subscribe to the channel um yeah hey y'all so i'm back for another review of growing up hip-hop season seven episode seven ice buck challenge okay so we get this scene the beginning of this episode that was clearly foreshadowing to what was gonna happen um jojo and his mother uh, he's taking his mother to go and get perfume or whatever. His mother is beautiful. Like, the Simmons kids make sense. How good looking they are, how polite they are, and thoughtful they are. Uh, and I've said that before, but that's, that's, those are just facts. Um, the mom says that they're, they're talking about his relationship with Buck, who is apparently Tanisha's father, who I didn't know shit about, but oh well. Um, other than this, the episode at the beginning of the season. So the mom says that perhaps Buck has an issue with JoJo. Just because, you know, it's his daughter and he's being protective. And I realized that she was trying to be reasonable. The difference is that Tanisha's father has not been a consistent presence in her life. And his beef with Jojo, like I said before, is because he's angry with Jojo because he's a better man to Tanise than he as a father has been to her. And he knows it. And it makes him feel insignificant. And instead of being a man and trying to fix that shit, he acts like a bitch. That's what the real deal is. His mother gives him advice and says that, you know, he has to deal with his father-in-law. And, and she's being reasonable. And I can just tell with that ninja, I could tell by the vibe, the way he made that whole one-year-old's birthday party about him. He, he He's a bitch-made motherfucker. And he doesn't wanted to work with Jojo. He wants to keep that beef going. So Jojo Simmons, um, as far as I'm concerned, gets attention and space on reality shows in several at this point in the game. And his bitch ass wants attention. Did we even see him on camera at the wedding? Apparently that's the issue later in the episode. Even though we saw everybody else, cause we saw, um, Jojo's mother, uh, the, the father, uh, his stepmother, her husband, I mean, his mother's husband. If we saw both sides of the family and we saw Tanisha's mother. I just presume her father just wasn't in the picture. I mean, what's the issue? Like, bruh, grow the fuck up. And don't grow up on growing up hip hop. Like, figure your shit out in real life, dumb motherfucker. Anyway, Sam and Egypt are doing their cake tasting. For some reason, that blonde wig doesn't, it doesn't irk me on Egypt. And I wanted to, and I feel like it should, but it doesn't. And I know it's got like a little green twist, but it was just something about it. Like I wanted to hate it, but for some reason it wasn't that bad. Uh, it was almost given. It was almost given. So they started talking about Sean and Titi coming to the wedding. Sam says Sean doesn't know him and that's why he doesn't like him. Well, Sam, there are plenty of people in this cast who do know you and can't stand your ass. So... I don't think you need to go that route, sir. I just leave it alone. Then he says, well, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, essentially they family. He says, you know, if he saw a bunch of guys jumping Sean in the street, he would get out of his car and fight everybody for him. And Egypt was like, yeah, you would. And he was like, and then I get him in his car and punch him in the face and then get back in my own car. I said, don't get me wrong. I kind of understand the logic. <laughs> Smidge, I do. I do. But my thing is, as somebody who has several cases, I, I'm just going to need for you to try to at least appear to be working on oneself. Anyway, Egypt starts laughing. I don't understand Egypt and Sam's relationship other than she's young and dumb and playing out what would have been her experiences in college or young adulthood without a camera in front of a camera. Everybody done been with a fuck boy. If you haven't, then you a lucky motherfucker or you was a fuck girl and didn't know the difference. Anyway, but nevertheless, um, I think he is bad news and trouble and just not, I'm just not here for it. So Lazy in the studio. He's in there doing some song talk. Come to the table. Let's eat. Come to the table. If you, I could do it. It's like, what the fuck is this corny shit? But it's hard to go in on him now, especially since he lost his mother. Because I, my condolences. I don't, I, let me tell you something. I don't wish that on anybody. And even though we can know something's a fact of life that inevitably will happen to all of us, that doesn't make it any easier. Um, so Sequoia comes to the studio to check on him after, her, um, you know, he comes back from his mother's funeral or whatever. 
he said their mother was out kicking it with his brothers and she, he said, you know, you can kind of say she went out with a bang. And he said she didn't take no mess, but she was a beautiful, beautiful woman. And he just, you know, he cried in the confessional. And I can only imagine, you know, how many nights, you know, you don't know. I don't know that pain never goes away. Um, so Lazy asked Sequoia and he just says to her, so you and your mom going through it. And for what? Had facts. Facts, sir. You are absolutely right. Because when we talk about somebody not coming back to life, there is no coming back from that. Is this really worth it? Really? Sequoia is saying she wanted her mother to be open and honest with her and that she doesn't want her mother coming at her and calling her disrespectful. Bitch, you were disrespectful as fuck. Are you kidding me right now? Like your mother was not wrong. And honestly, other people's mother would have said a whole lot worse to you for a whole lot less. Is she the only child? Like, she is a fucking ungrateful brat. I can't believe how much she spent so much time on this show talking negatively, scene after scene after scene, episode after episode after episode. Whenever there's a scene with her, she's talking bad about her mom. She don't just go, you know what? I just want to squash it. She talks badly about her. You ungrateful bitch. Get the fuck out of here. Anyway, so just when Denise meet up in the studio, I swear. There just must be the same studio for everybody because everybody producing music that we don't ever hear, we ain't ever checking for anyway. But anyway, so JoJo's in the studio and he's telling Tanise she has to wait to hear his new music like everybody else at this 50th hip hop thing. I wish they'd hurry up and do it. Like, I get that it's a big deal, but I get historically speaking why it's a big deal. <laughs> anyway, so he says he stopped doing music because he wasn't getting the feedback he wanted. I guess that means he wasn't making the kind of record sales that he wanted. Um... And so he took the behind the scenes approach and he was like, I signed a few artists that's been successful. So now he's just doing music for himself. And that's probably the best way to go. Don't try to end up trying to become no big rapper, big name. We all know talent sometimes skips a generation. It usually does. Uh, nevertheless, moving on. So he says he signed, uh, oh no, 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 I already said that. So she talks about Tanise, talks about how she doesn't want to pick and choose who she's going to hang with when her father comes to town and how she just kind of really wants them to settle it or whatever. And she was like, you know, there are business relationships that y'all could develop. Um, and you know, father and son relationships. And he was like, Nope, you're going too far. He's a father in law. She was like, well, you know what I mean? He was like, Nope, I have two fathers, Joseph Simmons and his mother's husband, somebody Alfonso. He was very clear about that. That's it. <laughs> and I'm here for it. Cause considering the fuck boy, her father is anyway, so we get Tretch at the wedding spot. He had a hot show with Offset and Cardi B and they're looking, asking about him. I can totally see myself ending up at Barclays watching, you know, um, a hip hop throwback concert with Tretch, Naughty by Nature. I would definitely rock this up. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm one of them people. I don't fuck with the Chris Browns of the world. He beat up Rihanna. He done beat up, uh, uh, What's the other little girl's name? Uh, well, young lady's name. And then after that, that's a habit. He has not corrected it. I'm over that shit. And I'm over people forgiving people who have not done the work to be back in the public eye. And then people treat what they did as if it's no big deal, especially violence against women, especially violence against black women. I don't like it. I say that to say the reason why I like Tretch is because Tretch strikes me as somebody who's done the work. He definitely had to look his daughter in the face and I could tell he was hurt. And I, I stand by the fact that I feel like he wasn't mad at Peppa when Egypt found out about how he had abused her. He seemed like he was more hurt, even though that's how he reacted. I think he was more hurt that he felt like Egypt would no longer look at him the way she did before. And I feel like Egypt is the first thing in his life he did right. Like he tried to fix it by trying to be a good father to his kids and even to Pep's son. And no, I don't think Pep is lying about her abuse or anything like that. But my point is somebody like Tretch is, is hood as hood can get, who comes from hood and has tried to make his life better and has sustained. And who's a good person who's obviously worked on himself. And that's what I'm talking about, growth, purposeful growth. Because how you carry yourself is an indication of how you want to be. And that's why I like Tretch's character. And that's why I like, like and respect him. Period. 
because he's still be keeping it real. But he just, I mean, I can just tell. And I, I, I appreciate that. I can appreciate that. So Egypt and her father come to see her wedding venue. She says she's trying to find all the right places and price points. And Trust was like, baby girl, I've seen this before. He said, you need two or three point people that, to help and let them tell them what to do and let them do their job. You have to stay stress free. He was like, weddings are stressful and you need to be stress free. And I appreciate the way they're supporting her throughout her pregnancy, especially since she had a miscarriage. They just want her to be okay. And the fact that she could talk to her father like that, they, that's, that's a blessing. Not, not just because she's a black girl. Like most people cannot, there's a lot of people that just can't go to their fathers like that. And um, she says she wants Tyran to walk her down the aisle with him. He was like, after he wasn't at the pregame, he's calling the first wedding. The <laughs> I don't know why they should crack me up, but that was funny. And Tretch was mad um, that Tyran wasn't invited. I didn't even, I had forgotten about that part. I was like, damn, Egypt. And Tretch was happy when she said, well, I invited TT. I invited everybody. Give her a plus one. I guess that was for her husband. <laughs> I can't with this shit. But I love the relationship with Tretch in Egypt. I really do. He's happy about being a grandfather and he's there for her. And I, 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 I like it. I, I think I like their scenes. Anyway, so Sequoia goes to her mom's house. Her aunties are there. And she was like, oh, this seems kind of like a intervention. Or something. They were like, no, we're on our way out, but we love you. Da, da, da. You know, whatever. Is this bitch delusional? Her gremlin country bug eyed looking ass. Let me tell you something. This bitch is, has just tried the entire fuck out of me this whole goddamn season. She has so much camera time. Please don't bring her back. She's not even fun to hate. Like, I just don't like this bitch. Okay. So she's telling us that her mom almost put her hands on her last time. Bitch, was we watching the same fucking show? And when they threw back the tape, I said, okay, I didn't miss anything. Ma'am, you are all kinds of out of order, out of sorts. Your brain is broken. Something is wrong. Like, what the entire fuck? Why is she so crazy in the way she sees the world from her mom to twist? Like, I just don't get it. Anyway, her mom asked her, like, what? Like, they sit down at the table. She's like, what is her issue? So Sequoia says that she didn't want to be in the middle again of a relationship and she doesn't want to see her mom hurt. Like when her father would call and be like, oh, your mom's not talking to me. She was like, first of all, that's different. That was a 20 year relationship. Lazy is not going to be calling you like that. Yes. And Sequoia Hunt, that was your father. Lazy's not your father. There's a different dynamic in that kind of, it, it's just different. You can literally see the tears welling up in Tiny's eyes. She felt bad that her daughter doesn't like her decisions. And Sequoia, you are literally breaking your mother's heart on fucking television. And it seems like for scenes, like you're defending your father. But your mother is clearly the one in your life on this show with you. And I know your father is sick, but you know your father did a lot of bullshit. And if you don't want to see your mother hurt, I'm going to need for you, baby, to bring it back. Because you are doing most of the hurting right now. And it's fucked up. It is. You continue to make every single scene about your mom in the most negative way. You ain't talking about her for five weeks. Well, shit, we can't forget Tiny because you always bringing her up. To people that ain't even family. What the hell? Girl, bye. So Trench meets up with Tyran. And once again, this is what I'm talking about. When we talk about growth. Like, there has clearly been an issue over the years that Tyran has kind of felt like, you know, he was kind of put aside by Pep to some degree. Because, you know, her career and he was the older one. And that Egypt kind of seems a little spoiled. You know, but, and, you know, it's just not, I don't mean to say it like, anyway, I, I, just that. But the fact that Tretch has maintained a relationship with Tyran and didn't go, oh, fucking, I'm done with Pep. He just my daughter. Uh, that ain't my son. We ain't married no more. The fact that he, after all these years, is still like that, that's heartwarming. And I think that's a good example of being on TV, of what it means to be a blended family and what it is to love somebody who you're not with anymore so much that you love the people in their life. The fact that Tretch 
was happy that TT was invited to that wedding. The fact that Tretch wants TT, Pep's niece, to constantly be in Egypt's life for a reason. And when she says, well, we're, she was talking about saying we're cousins. He, he was like, no, y'all are past that. Y'all are like sisters. And y'all got to fix that. And I remember him saying that. Not Pep. And that to me, like I said, that's, that's, I can respect growth. And people who are now trying to live their life better every day. And I'm sure it's a constant struggle. You, anybody who listened to Naughty by Nature uh, records and know the kind of shit Tretch was describing, I'm sure that, that childhood trauma, but the fact that he is working to fix it and break that cycle, you, I give it up to him. Anyway, so Tyrion's like, I just got my motorcycle license. He was like, uh, I don't ride anything without seatbelts and doors. But anyway, they start talking about Sam. And Tretch said, look, Sam is in time out with me. He says he's tired of him talking about what he's going to do. He needs to go and find a damn job. You got a wife, you got a baby on the way. He was like, his true colors are showing. I was like, well, shit, y'all could have called me back in second season. I would have told y'all. This is some bullshit. Who didn't see this coming? Uh, anyway, and he was like, basically, I feel like he kind of had the attitude. He has the attitude like, well, I know I'm going to be good, so I'm going to bag her because her family's going to always make sure that she's good. He was like, she comes from a well-off family. Like, he was very clear. And I was thinking to myself, where the fuck was all this shit when we saw all these red flags before? Tyree is the peacemaker, you could tell. Because it's like almost like he knows Tretch can turn, <laughs> turn up and he don't like Sam either. But he's also afraid of what may happen if Tretch turns all the fucking way up. Because he don't play about his baby girl. So Tyree feels a way about not being invited to the first one. Yeah, and he should. He said he felt excluded and he's hurt. And Tretch was like, look, if you don't come, it's going to break your heart. And Tyran feels the way. And he was like, but honestly, he was like, all I can say is, I understand you. I understand you. But just think about it. And I see all through this shit. Sam is already driving wedges and has been for some time between Egypt and her family. So as he becomes more abusive, she won't have anybody to turn to. He's a bitch ass. I see your game. But you you messing with a real gangster's daughter. So if I was you, and it is she Tretch ain't like bitch ass fuck who throw ice. Okay, that nigga look like he would go to jail and kill for his, okay? Anyway, so Jojo goes to the studio to see Buck. Speaking of bitch motherfuckers. And they playing the record C H A M P I O N. That's some corny ass shit. I said, y'all get this the fuck off my screen. Anyway, so then he gets butter on the phone. Who the fuck is butter? I can't wait for some explanation about who the fuck some nigga named Butter, I mean, some somebody named Butter is. So he got Butter on the phone and says he doesn't know whether to hug him or slug him. Talking about JoJo. What kind of bitch made shit is that? You calling another man to tell him that your son-in-law done showed up to the studio? You a... <sighs> keep going, so I keep going. So JoJo tries to be reasonable. And continues to have a conversation with him for the sake of Tanisha's happiness. Okay? You could tell JoJo was raised right. That clearly he respects and loves his wife enough to go and do this for her own good, for his grandkids' own good. I mean, for his children's own good and to try to make it better for them to have a relationship with their grandfather. That's what a man does. That's what a man is supposed to do. And Jojo is articulate. This is some hood rat trash ass motherfucker. I'm just keeping it real. That can't explain himself and talk loud. Da, 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 this, da, 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 Cause he thinks that shit is cute. and going to get him on TV. He's a bitch. Jojo, you acted like a man and you should be proud of yourself. Cause let me tell you something. There's a whole lot of motherfucking ways you could have handled that shit. And I wouldn't have blamed you. So this ninja is smoking hookah. Up there with his feet on the table. And so Jojo was like, well, you know, look, what's the issue, man? Like, what? where do we need to start? I don't know where to start. I, motherfucker, explain what your problem is. You coming off like a chick on the heaviest day of her fucking period. The fuck? Nick, tell him what your problem is. If, if, if it's that deep. So Jojo gives Buck the floor and just lets him go ramble on. So he said, how, how are you the man of your family? He was like, I am the man of my family. He said, is this, is he said that he's mad about the wedding. Remember, I said, I noticed that. I don't remember seeing her father. He said, Tanise didn't um, 
let him walk her down the aisle. Joseph was like, I didn't have anything to do with that. He was like, she said you was wild now. She didn't want you there to, to walk her down the aisle. I had to support that. He was like, but you in charge of the family. You're supposed to control that. You should have said something. I'm like, what kind of man advocate for another man to control his daughter in a relationship that way? A fucked up one and one who hasn't been a good father. I can tell you that right now. Because a good father would have never wanted any man that had that kind of control over his daughter, that unhealthy kind of abusive trash. That's the kind of man he is. Anyway, so JoJo says, well, look, when you hurt her, she comes and cries to me. That's what she comes and cries to. And you've hurt her over and over again. So you can tell her father doesn't communicate and he hasn't explained to him what the fuck the issue is. He's up here saying, well, there's a king and a queen in the house. How the fuck you know? I can tell you ain't married to nobody. Nobody. You ain't married to her mother. What, you gonna give advice? And he was like, well, if you're not the king, then why? I mean, if you're the king, then why don't you have control over her? What the fuck? And he's on some bullshit. Then he says, like, well, fine. If she don't want to fuck with me as a father, she don't have to. Fuck it. See? That right there lets you know every fucking thing you need to know about that motherfucker. What kind of father says, well, fuck it. If you don't want to bother me, one who ain't been shit her whole life. That's who. One who's gone in and out of her life. He was like, well, look, you said that Joseph was your aggressor. Did she hear me say it? Did she hear me say it? Did you say it? You did say it. What you didn't think was it was going to get back to her. Cut it out. The hell out of here. How the hell is it not your grandson if it's her son? Huh? The fuck out of here. What kind of shit does that say about your daughter? Well, she don't have to fuck with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, how come you didn't speak to me at the uh uh the birthday party? He was like, well, you was over there arguing. How I wasn't going to make that worse. Right, because that's ghetto and hood. And he had to be a father to his son and to his daughter at the baby's birthday party. So then JoJo says, Next thing you know, he's telling Jojo to get the fuck out of the studio. Jojo was like, I'll leave when I want to leave. And you know Jojo wasn't going to stay that long. But at that point, like, I'm sure he was just having a moment. This motherfucker throws a bucket of ice on him. And Jojo's like, you threw ice on me like a girl. And you did. You an ignorant motherfucker talking shit, not making sense, trying to talk off of Jojo about him and how I pay all the bills. Whatever Jojo didn't pay for before they weren't officially married actually as far as I'm concerned don't matter because that makes her single and here you are her father talking about what bills you paid this this is how I can tell you didn't support her like that because if you can count it it don't happen that often I can't I can't number the things my mother's done for me because she's done so much that's some bullshit you were paying your daughter's rent years ago. Motherfucker, that's what the fuck you were supposed to do as she's moving into adulthood and growing up. And no, everybody's parents can't do it, but for the ones who can, which seems to be your case, do you, yeah, you help her. And then shut the fuck up about it, you bitch. Anyway, so that's my thoughts on growing up hip-hop. I'll talk to y'all soon because Potomac comes back on on Sunday. Um, Yeah, be sure to like and subscribe. All right? See you soon.